please welcome to the show Anthony Bourdain. Nice to see you, sir. How are you? Nice to see you. Thanks for coming on the show. It's a, it's a lot of been accomplished, and certainly in the second act of your life. I wonder if it's all a big surprise to you, in a sense. Uh, you know, if you ever been really drunk late at night and you're playing pinball and you want to go home, but for, you, you keep racking up extra points because you don't care and you never expect it to be there in the first place, I, I feel like that. I'm like, I'm on my third life and on uh, bonus round. Well, that's a nice place to be there, right? Yes. Because then you can play fast and loose with everything. Well, I'm having a really good time. I mean, I have the best job in the world, and I'm, I'm uh, milking it for everything I can get. But in a sense, you've had to change, and not change, I suppose, your personality, but you, you've come up with a slightly different uh, way to represent yourself or present yourself. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it was a calculated thing. I think, you know, the minute you, you have a child, you see your, your, your child's face, any notions of being a bad boy chef or, you know, pretty, pretty ludicrous. Uh, I don't know that there are any cool dads, I don't know that there should be. You know, cool is not really caring about anything. Uh, and of course, once you have a child, you know, that's, that's you, you care a lot. But was it, was that a surprise to you that, uh, that, you, that you approached it this way? I mean, no, I, 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 was, I was ready, but I mean, you really, you, first time you see your child's face, you, you, you really know on a cellular level <laughs> that, that you're just not the center of the world anymore. It's just that simple. Uh, I bet your wife must love this, <laughs> this new version of you. Well, yeah, uh, certainly. Uh, she, <laughs> um, she's Italian, uh, very a strong-willed uh, woman, and uh, you know, not someone that you know take a lot of nonsense. And mm -hmm. you know, let's say I'm 54. I mean, it's it's you know, it's undignified. You know, over 50, you really got to reconsider the leather jacket. Well, or <laughs> you know. But only if the leather jacket represented something to you. And, and did that, did you embrace that? I know that it was presented as you're the bad boy chef, but did you feel that? Did it mean that to you? I just, no, of course, I never took it seriously. I just didn't really know any better. I mean, I, I spent the first uh, uh, 28 years of my working life, my whole working life until the, the Kitchen Confidential hit, uh, standing in a small submarine-sized kitchen with a bunch of sweaty tattooed guys. And that was, you know, the, the, the level of discourse was not the, the best. And, that was the world that I lived in, I was very happy in. I didn't expect to suddenly find myself with a best-selling book. I certainly didn't expect myself to find myself uh, with a TV show that allowed me to go wherever I want in the world, do whatever I want, and, and, and I don't even have to behave. Uh, so, you know, I'm learning as I go and, and uh, presenting a moving target, I hope. The, um, the thing about you and a lot of anybody who gets to be in a position where celebrity is thrust upon them, especially in a world like yours, you have, you have these disciples. And then ultimately your disciples extend to a group of people that you probably don't even know. And I imagine at a certain point when, when they saw this no leather jacket version of you, they kind of thought, what happened to Tony Bourdain? Uh, there's definitely, I, I think I've been, I've been playing with that for a while. I mean, um, I, I reached a point in, in my television career where I was very aware that people expected me to be the snarky, cynical, half-drunk guy in the leather jacket, that I was the bad guy on Top Chef, that certain types of behaviors were expected of me. And, you know, I've always been something of a prov provocateur, and I thought, really, the most perverse thing I could do at this point in my life is stick a thumb in the eye of my, you know, most dedicated fans and do a really huggy, Cosby-esque, rainbows and unicorns show, you know, with my family. And I would watch I, I, that. <laughs> I, I, I did one. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, I took a lot of, you know, genuinely perverse pleasure from doing it because I think it was just about the most offensive and, and uh, risky thing I could do. I, was, I, I fully expected to get pilloried for it. Is it about owning your own identity? Is it about having control as opposed to what other people think of you? No, I'm not looking to stretch. I mean, I'm not going to you know, appear in Falstaff on, off Broadway just to prove I, you know, that I can move beyond this. It's not about that. It's just staying interested and being able to look at myself in the mirror in the morning and not feel like a, you know, a clown. Uh -huh. Well, and, 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 and to, to get to this point, what, what I found was another expectation of you is that you had to top yourself and that you had to just keep eating this stuff. And what I liked about what you were doing, I, I find, that, and a lot of people find the notion of a foodie a sort of very first world and offensive that food, and people yeah. actually go, they go, I'm a foodie. Well, we're all foodies. We yeah. have to eat, yeah. right? Yeah. It's, it's the, it, and it, but you actually 
it wasn't about eating fancy food in fancy restaurants. You went out and, and went to places that most people will never get to go and eat food that most people would just be horrified at. But did you feel at a certain point like, well, I've eaten all this crazy stuff, I can't really top that anymore. Yeah, I mean, I found myself, uh, there was an armadillo incident a while back where, you know, the, the producers had said, you know, they eat armadillo here in, in Uruguay and, and uh, we're going to go to this uh, farm out in the wilderness and, and we're going to eat armadillo. And I, uh, you know, they had this terrified, shivering little armadillo, you know, paralyzed with fear. You know, I mean, I think we were eating the family pet, you know, yeah. for, for purposes of television entertainment. And I, and I was unconvinced that this was an everyday meal and what was the point? And I'm not going to eat that thing just to freak people out. I'll eat it if it's delicious, um, without without any moral quandary or qualm at all. Um, but yeah, you know, leave that to the other guy. I'm, uh, honestly, it, it's a quality of life issue for me. Am I am I having fun while making television? Am I staying curious? Um, are, are the people I'm working with having fun as well? Are we pushing each other to do something that at least at least interesting to us, yeah. that, that's enough for me. Much was made about uh, when you were a younger man and, and you had all the, the inner anger and you found your ways to express yourself. Do you still have that anger? I'm still angry, yeah. sure. <laughs> I mean, you know, uh, every time I see, I, every time I drive by an olive garden, I'm angry. <laughs> <laughs> You call that Italian food? You know. But dude, the garlic bread off the top is pretty amazing. Oh, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Nasty. Um, the but but that's it, right? Talk about the food industry and the meat industry because because you, you I mean a lot you eat a lot of meat. But what do you think about the condition of the meat industry at this stage? Well, I like meat, and it doesn't even have to be particularly good meat, and it doesn't even have to be particularly safe. It's just. You know, I don't think it should be. I don't think it should be soaked in ammonia or, or treated with ammonia like a lot of the fast food uh, uh, quality burgers are apparently treated with to make them safe enough to eat. I don't think you should. We, I think it's unpatriotic as an American, as, as somebody for whom the national dish, whether you like it or not, is the hamburger. I feel I should be able to walk into any restaurant in America and order my steak or, or my, my hamburger, goddamn medium rare. When you order, know, it's unpatriotic <laughs> if I can't do that. It means it's a win for the terrorists. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> So if you can't get a medium rare Big Mac, the Taliban have won, in your mind. They may as well be <laughs> pouring across the barricades what? because I don't think I should have to treat my burger like medical waste. Okay, but when you have a kid now and you know that the, most of these, these major companies target young people and, and that's yeah. part of freedom for them is that you know when you're growing up, freedom was going to McDonald's when you felt like it, right. not just on Saturdays if you were good. Right. How do you talk to your, when you look at your kid, how do you approach healthy eating with her. Well, I think tactically taking the high road with a three-year-old is the wrong way to go. Well, yeah. you know, Hunter, Vanessa, have you read Michael Pollan's, uh, you know, latest book? And, yeah. you know, do you know what you're doing? You know, it's, it's bad for you. Did that ever work on you when you were set, even 17? On the other hand, how hard is it to scare the living shit out of a three-year-old? <laughs> so you scare her? I, yeah. Oh, that's so good. Yeah. You know, uh, you, one might say, I'm not suggesting you do, but one might suggest that you've heard around the schoolyard that Ronald McDonald might have been implicated in the disappearance and dismemberment of small children. <laughs> Allegedly. That's not... That's, that's not, scary not, stuff, dude. You know, I hear little Timmy went missing. Oh, uh, yeah. not Ronald again. <laughs> What's in, you know, what, what do you anticipate will be in your daughter's lunchbox on her first day of school? Well, her mother's Italian, uh, you know, I married into a large Italian and Sardinian family. So, uh, you know, already, you know, stuff that she's identified she likes that mom and daddy, you know, pecorino cheese, olives, she likes fishy stuff like anchovies, tuna. She likes raw oysters, which is really weird. Um, but whatever she likes. I mean, she's a little kid. I'm not going to force her to be an annoying foodie, you know. Uh, I'm not going to, you know, honey, have you tried sushi? You know, I'm not going to do that to her. <laughs> What's a food that's rocking your world right now? Uh, right now, uh, yakitori, you know, little bits of uh, a chicken perfectly skewered and, and, and grilled over charcoal. Love it. You had the chance, you went to CBGB's back in the day, right? Yes. What's the best concert you've ever attended? Uh, best concert I ever attended, um, Iggy and the Stooges at the Paramount Theater in 1973 with, uh, uh, was Iggy and the Stooges, Blue Oyster Cult, Teenage Lust, and a little band called Kiss. A little, nice. They were the bottom act. Nice. <laughs> Didn't uh, the Stooges Funhouse record really set you on a completely different path in your life? Uh, it said something about you in high school if you suddenly showed up with the Stooges album. I mean, you'd really broken with decent society, all your friends. You know, only like meth heads and car freaks really liked the Stooges back then. <laughs> uh, but I, to me, it, 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 it spoke to me because it was just not the other guys, you know, I was not a Loggins and Messina fan. This should come as no surprise. Is that when you started getting into drugs and that kind of lifestyle? Uh, I moved from psychedelics into more, you know, uh, less uh, huggy friendly drugs. <laughs> <laughs> Which was harder to kick? And I'm not saying this in a joking way cigarettes or heroin? Which is harder to kick? 
heroin. <laughs> I mean, you know, people don't rob you for a, you know, a menthol. <laughs> What's, uh, what's your opinion on vegetarians, young man? Bad. Bad tourists, bad guests, uh, not a lot of fun, generally flatulent. There, there you go. <laughs> of the seven deadly sins, wrath, greed, lust, pride, envy, sloth, but not counting gluttony, which are you most guilty of committing? Yeah, I think I make pretty much a clean sweep of those. <laughs> <laughs> when you were a kid, what was the f favorite thing your mother used to cook? A lot of guys identify with their mother in the kitchen or father. What was for you? I, I love mom's meatloaf. You know, that was great, great stuff. Uh, but my birthday, I would get the roast beef and Yorkshire pudding. Nice. Love that. What's your tastiest cute animal? Tastiest cute animal? C really cute? Yeah. Uh, Kui in Peru. Uh, they, they, you know, it's basically guinea pig. Mm -hmm. um, and they're delicious. It's like a little suckling pig, only <laughs> cuter. Okay, finally, what's your karaoke song? Um, it's um, I Want to Be Your Dog by the Stooges. Nicely done. The book is called Medium Raw. You've got to check it out. Anthony Bourdain, everybody. Thanks for seeing